Hey, welcome back. So I've been having a lot of fun with Dart at the moment. In fact, I'm probably gonna do a couple of tutorials on that for anyone who's curious about the language. But in this video, I'm gonna show you how you can get a web server up and running in Dart in a Docker image. And the size of the Docker image is gonna be about 8.97 megabytes. About. Alrighty, first things first, we need to create ourselves a web server which is gonna serve up our content. Now, I already have Dart installed on my machine but we're not gonna do that. When I do that tutorial video, then we'll cover it in that video there but for just now, a bit of a prerequisite is you're gonna have to have Dart installed. And what we will do is, on my terminal here, is to create a new Dart project, we will just type in Dart, which is our command line tool, and Dart create, and then the name of our project. So we will call that Dart underscore server. And then if we hit return there, it's automatically gonna generate uh, all the files that I need to get started. So if I were to then just uh, do an LS here, you can see it's created a folder called Dart server. So we'll just CD into that. And you can see off the bat, it's created a sort of changelog MD, analysis options, YAML, pub specs, etc. I'm not gonna go into this because this isn't a tutorial video on Dart, but, um, but you can kind of see that it scaffolded up a, a sort of basic project file that I need. All right, so what we'll do now is we're gonna open up Visual Studio Code and then we'll just have a look at the files created and we'll get creating our Dart server. So to do that, I'll just type in code dot uh, and that will fire up Visual Studio Code for me. So we'll just make that a little bit bigger. And if we look in the folders here, so there's a bin folder and you can see it's automatically created this Dart underscore server dot Dart and it creates me this hello world routine. So I'm just gonna make that a little bit bigger to make it uh, easy for everyone to read. So we've got my hello world program. In fact, if I just came back into my terminal and I typed in Dart run, uh, it's gonna build that and as you can see, it comes back with hello world. So that's a very, very quick way of getting started uh, <laughs> with Dart. So let's come back into Visual Studio Code. By the way, I've got the Dart extensions already installed in Visual Studio Code, hence why you get all the highlighting. All right, so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna delete all of this code because we're not gonna need it. All right, now that I've deleted that, the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna import some packages that I might need. So. Dart in one of its packages has an HTTP server class, which I'm gonna to wanna to use. So what I'm gonna do is import that uh, into my file. So uh, in Dart language, to import a package, you just type in import and then put in the package uh, name. So in this case, I'm gonna to wanna to use the Dart IO package. Um, and again, I'm gonna semicolon terminate that. And that has the HTTP server class that I want. Now, the second thing that I'm gonna do here is I'm going to set a server name so later on so I can see what the name of my server is I'm gonna call this start serve um, and again I'm gonna do that as a constant and then the second thing that I need to do here is I want to use a port so in this case uh, I'm gonna start up my machine my uh, HTTP server listener on port 8080 um, so I'll just set that as a constant as well so that's my kind of <laughs> my, my uh, constants declarations that I kind of need there. So unlike the hello world, which was a command line utility, because I'm creating uh, a web server in the background, an HTTP server, what I want to be able to do in that particular case is set it up as uh, an asynchronous uh, main entry point. So what I'm going to do here is set this as a future. Um, so it's going to be all asynchronous. I'm going to give the entry point name main, and then I need to specify that it's a, an async uh, function. So I'm just going to put async there. And that gives me my sort of scaffolding here. Now to kind of get started, the first thing that I need to do is I need to um, create an HTTP uh, server and then I need to set that to listen to the specified port. So I'll put a comment here. So listen on any IP address uh, that it can bind to on port 8080. So here's a little bit of commenting. And then what we're going to do here is we're going to... Um, create a, uh, a constant called server. So in this case, um, I've set that as a final. So difference between a const and a final is they're both constants, but const is a compile time. 
binding where is uh, or compilation <laughs> and and final is actually where you can do a runtime but the, the key thing is the same which is when I initialize my uh, variable then I can't set it to something else once it's been had that first uh, initialization the, the main difference is const is going to do it in compilation whereas final is going to do it on runtime okay so now that I've done that I'm just going to await and I'm going to use this HTTP server class that we mentioned earlier. So, and I'm gonna call the bind. There is a bind secure, but we're just gonna use HTTP for just now. And then I'm gonna to bind to uh, any IP4 address. And again, I'm gonna use this internet address or any IPv4. So essentially what that's gonna mean on my machine is it's gonna to bind to 0 .0 .0 0.0.0.0. Yeah, and then of course, as I said before, I'm gonna specify my port, which is this constant 8080 that I set up here. So now that my server is bound and listening on port 8080, I just wanna print that out on my terminal so that I know that that server is started. And then I can also print out the actual IP address, etc. So I'll just put a print statement in here and we'll just write in something like server uh, started. And again, you know, we'll use a little bit of um, uh, dart fun here. So we'll use a string uh, interpolation where we can essentially just pass in uh, uh, the result of a variable. So in this case, we're going to pass in the server IP address. So and we do that by server dot address. And again, it's within this sort of dollar uh, and these uh, brackets here. So that's just going to tell us what IP address that's on. So we'll just type in port rather than just putting in the constant. That doesn't really tell us anything in this case. What actually I want to do is just show what the actual port that was coming back from my HTTP server. So to do that again, we will put a uh, uh, dollar and we'll put some brackets in there. And then this time we'll type in server dot port. And then that will be the actual port that is being bound from. And again, we'll just uh, semicolon terminate that. So that is my server up and running and listening. And now all we really need to do is handle some requests. So to do that, we are just going to await for and then we'll just do HTTP request uh, and then we'll type in request in server and we will just put some brackets in there. And what that is essentially meaning is each as each incoming request happens, then it will act as the handler and you can sort of respond to that. So in order to handle those incoming requests, that is literally all you need to do in Dart, and that is us up and running with our uh, server. Okay, so now that we've got a request handler set up, um, then all we need to do is, as each request comes in, we just wanna send a response back. So in this case, it's gonna be uh, a hello world. So I'm just gonna do uh, request.response. And if I just wanted to return hello world, then I could just do this and then type in hello uh, world. We'll put a little question mark there. And then that would be all I would need. I can just do hello world and that's gonna come back on the body. Uh, the, the last thing that, that I would need to do is to close the uh, uh, connection. So I could do, just do close the response. So in that case, all I'm gonna do is do another await and request.response.close. And that is my basic hello world. Now I wanna do something a little bit more complicated in this case, so maybe I wanna set a couple of headers as well. So I could do a request.response.headers.set um, and then I can put in server uh, and then I can put in a uh, server name. So that would be the server name that I set earlier up here. So if you remember, I set that to Dart serve. Um, and then I could also, if I wanted to type, put in a content type, so I would want that to come back as plain text. Now in this particular case, I can use another little Dart feature, which is uh, called cascading. So rather than me typing in request.response all the time, I can just do a request.response here. And then what I can do is just indent this. So rather than uh, type in request response every time, I can just, um, just to indent it here. And then all I need to do is do a dot dot and then remove that semicolon here 
and then I can save myself a little bit of typing. So that's pretty cool. It's a technique called cascading. I kind of like it. It just cuts down uh, a little bit of the typing. So if I want to extend that out a little bit more, I could do headers.set and then we'll set the content type in this case. So we'll set the content type to uh, being, uh, let's set that to text plane. And again, because it's in a cascade, I don't semicolon terminate that. I only semicolon tell, terminate the, the last item. So I have now got my basic web server uh, sort of created on Dart. Now, if I want to get that up and running, <laughs> all I need to do is type in Dart run. And then it's gonna build my Dart server. And as you can see, my server is started and it is up and running. So if I wanted to, uh, then check that everything is fine. So I could just do a curl local host uh, 8080 and then you can see it comes back with hello world. I said that uh, we're gonna create this Docker image and it's gonna run at around 13,000 requests per second on my machine. Actually, before we create the Docker image, what we're gonna do is just see how fast the Dart run performs. So I'm gonna use a tool uh, called WRK, which uh, it's kind of like Apache Beam, but it's a little bit more stable. I had a lot of problems with that Apache Beam on my machine, but WRK is uh, pretty cool. If you want to install that on your machine, you can just type in brew install WRK, or if you're on Windows, you can just download that. Um, so and what WRK allows you to do is sort of do a load test against your machine. So we have got my Dart server running here. So if I want to run a load test on that, I'm going to set this to uh, run with 12 threads. So I'm gonna fairly hammer this thing and I'm gonna set this to have uh, 400 concurrent connections. Um, and I'm gonna get this to run for about 30 seconds. Okay, so it's gonna be a 30 second test with 400 concurrent connections with thread 12 threads uh, hitting that uh, web server that I just created. And then I'm gonna have it connect to uh, 127 uh, zero, uh, one, so my local host 80. 80. I find that with WRK, if you type in localhost, it gets a little bit flaky, whereas uh, 127001 sort of works a little bit better. So if I just kick off that test just now, it's gonna run that test for about 30 seconds, and then it's gonna tell me roughly how many requests per second that um, is running for. Alrighty, so the test is finished. <laughs> As you can see, this thing is belting along on my machine, right? I'm running this on a, an Apple Mac uh, M1, so it's the Apple Silicon Jack chip. Um, and it's running at 49,000 requests per second. Now, of course, all right, so we obviously have a super fast web server at the moment, which is great. Um, but now what we're gonna do is gonna build that Docker container. Now, obviously we don't want to have the Dart framework and be able to run the Dart run command within the Docker file because that's gonna get a little bit big and painful, etc. So what we wanna be able to do is compile our application into an exe and then just copy that exe into a Docker container. To, to do a compilation within Dart, we would just type in something like Dart compile uh, exe. Um, so we're just saying go create as an exe. Uh, and then we give it the location of the Dart file we want to compile. So in this case, it's the uh, Dart underscore server uh, dot Dart file that was in our bin folder. And then we want to output that to uh, an, uh, a location with a name. So in this case, I'm going to output this to the build folder. And I don't think I've created the build folder yet. Uh, and then we will, uh, you know, we'll give our exe the name Dart serve. So we'll just run that for a second. There you go. So give this is an error because I haven't created the, that path. So let me just create a folder called build for a second. And then we'll just run that command again. And then uh, there we go. We now have in our build folder a Dart serve um, file. So we're in a good uh, position just now. And actually, if I was to then run that file, so if we come back into uh, the build folder, for example. So let's go into build folder. Actually, let's not go into the build folder. Let's just clear the screen. If we were just to run build uh, dart serve uh, like this, you can see it's now working. It's off of 000, port 80. And then if I were to do a curl again, uh, I'm gonna be lazy and just do that. 
uh, you can see I get my hello world working again. And again, I could do a performance test, but you're gonna get kind of similar results to what uh, we had before. So we now have a way of uh, building our application. Uh, so now we're gonna go on and build our uh, Docker image. And finally, the last thing I'm gonna do before we create our Docker file is I'm just gonna create ourselves a Docker ignore file. Um, and, and the reason I'm gonna do that is I obviously, there's a bunch of things that we don't want copied into our Docker file. So I wanna make that super easy and just have those things uh, kind of ignored and not pulled into the image. And that includes things like the build folder as well as kind of packages, etc. So I want a pretty clean image. And therefore with the Docker ignore, Docker is not gonna pull any of those files into the folder. Okay, so we're up and running uh, just now. So now that we've got our Docker ignore file in place, what we're gonna do now is create our actual Docker file. So that is just a file called Docker file. And the first thing that we're gonna to need to do is set what our base image is. And in this case, we're gonna use the official Dart image. We'll optimize it a little bit later, but for just now, we're just gonna use the official Dart image, which is gonna have all of the tools for compilation, etc. cetera. So uh, in this case, we're gonna pull the stable image. So it will just be the latest version of Dart. And then next thing that we're gonna do is we are gonna going to copy um, uh, every, everything in our Dart server uh, uh, file into a folder called uh, Dart server. So that is just going to do a basic copy in that sense. And then next thing we're going to do is we're going to set the working directory to be uh, Dart server. So that gives us our basic Docker file. Um, we also need to create a build directory because remember that Docker ignore is gonna not copy across that build folder at all. So we will just need to create that. So we'll just run a make dir uh, build. So the next thing that we need to do is compile our uh, Dart application. So in this case, we will type in Dart uh, compile and it's gonna be of an exit. So it's exactly what we did on our terminal a little bit earlier. Uh, we need to pass in the location of the Dart file that we wanna con uh, compile. So in this case, it's gonna be called Dart server dot Dart. And then we need to output this to our build folder. And we are gonna call this one Dart serve. Okay, so that's gonna do our compilation and it's gonna stick a, an exe called Dart serve. And then finally, all we need to do is when we start up a Docker image, uh, we just wanna execute that uh, file. So to access that, we just need to uh, go to our build folder. So we'll just type in build and then call Dart serve. Um, and that is our Docker image. So all we need to do now is build the image. So if we come back into our terminal for a second, and what we are going to do is just type in docker build. Uh, and we're going to tag this as Chris Hay UK uh, dart serve. And then we're just gonna build uh, from this folder. So our Docker file is here, so we can just put in dot and then it will pick that up. So we'll just run that and then it's gonna build our Docker image. It'll take a few seconds. You see it's done the compilation uh, and that's all good. So we can just clear that. And if I turn in Docker images, you can see created eight seconds ago, I've got something called Chris Hay UK Dart Serve and it's quite a big image, it's 521 megabytes, but we'll optimize that in a second. So that is us up and running. And then to just check it works, we can type in docker run. We'll put in a dash dash in it. So that means that I can do a control C to just basically terminate the, uh, the, the uh, Docker image when I want. Uh, and then we're gonna map the ports. Uh, so obviously we are exposing port 8080. So uh, I'm gonna map that to port 8080 in my machine. So I can just type in localhost 8080 and we can have access to that. And then we'll start up Chris Hay UK at Dart Serve. Okay, so if we run that for a second and you can see we are now running uh, on our local machine, in our Docker image, um, our application. So if I were to type in curl localhost 8080, and you see it comes back with hello world. And actually I can do that in the browser as well. I know I haven't done that yet. So if we just do localhost uh, 8080, uh, and you can see it comes back with hello world. And in fact, if I go to developer tools for a second, and let's just hit that again. 
and then you can see curl localhost 8080. Um, if we can have a look at the response headers, there's the content type is text plain as I said before, and there's the server name is Dart Server as I said. So you can kind of see that all those um, setting of um, headers works in, and they're all viewable in that sense. Okay, so that's that's us uh, up and running. Now, what we should do is is actually uh, just ch test the performance of that again. So in the same way as we ran the WRK to do a performance test, let's, let's do the same, but this time against our Docker image. So we'll run that for a second. It's gonna take obviously about 30 seconds to do that test. And then we should come back with an answer. Alrighty, so it is completed the test. And as you can see, it's running at around 12,000 requests per second. So I'm taking a bit of a hit. If you remember that first time I ran the test when I was running it natively on my machine, it was running at like uh, 49,000 requests per second. So just by having the kind of Docker framework in place, it's, it's, it is really running uh, maybe something like four times as slow as it was running earlier. But Next thing we're gonna do though, is we are gonna try and optimize that image. So if we look at this, we see Docker images, and as I said before, it's a 521 meg image, right? So it's a big image. So let's see if we can uh, make it a little bit skinnier as an image. So if we come back into uh, Visual Studio Code, let's close that for a second. Uh, come back to Visual Studio Code for a second. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna use a technique called multi-stage builds. So to do that, what we essentially do is use one image for building and compilation and another image for um, execution. And essentially we copied the, the, the built binary from one uh, image to another. And then that means in the second image, we don't need to have any of the build tools. So let me show you what I mean. So in this case, I'm gonna change this to being as builder. Uh, so I'm, I'm, in fact, let's, let's just take away some of the spaces uh, here for a second. So this is responsible for the compilation. So this is my builder image. And now what I wanna do is have a second image, which is gonna be responsible for uh, so for hosting the, the web server. So in this case, I'm gonna use a smaller image and what I'm gonna use is the Debian uh, uh, Buster Slim uh, image, which is a smaller image than, than the Dart image. We will go even further than this, but I wanna show you how what this process kinda of is. So in this case, I'm gonna use the Debian Buster Slim image. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna copy uh, from uh, the builder image, and we're gonna take the uh, Dart server um, build folder, and we're gonna copy that into a folder called bin on uh, this new image that, that I've just created there. And then all I need to do here is just uh, run Dart serve. And then that is meaning that I don't need any of the Dart tools in this second image. This is gonna be the, the image that I'm gonna run uh, locally, but I have a cleaner image because I don't need any of the Dart tools and then I can use a smaller version, etc. So that's gonna give us some performance benefits as you're gonna see in a second. So if we come back to my terminal and we'll just uh, kill this for a second and we'll do another Docker build. So I'll take a few seconds uh, to build that, we'll just clear this out and then we'll run Docker images for a second. And you see that Chris Hey UK Dart Serve uh, image is now much smaller. It's 69 meg, 69.4 meg. So it's a much smaller image. And of course, if I just do a Docker run there, it's up and running again. And then I can do a curl uh, localhost 8080. Um, oh, I can't spell. So if I do a curl localhost 8080, you can see it comes back with hello world. So we're in a kind of good space. I've got a smaller image, 70 megs. Um, I'm still running at the performance, which I'll prove in a second uh, that I wanted. But okay, it's 70 megs, but I think we can do a lot better, right? So maybe what we could do is not run uh, a distribution at all, and maybe we can try and build this from the, uh, the scratch file. So one of the nice things that uh, Docker 
supports is this ability to run from the, a scratch file, which means there's absolutely nothing on this. And then you can just copy your binary. And so let's see how that works. Let's see if that will work or if it breaks it. Um, and, I, and you can probably guess it's probably going to break it, but but let's let's see what happens in this case. So I'm going to go back to Visual Studio Code, and then rather than running Debian Buster Slim, I'm going to type in from scratch. So we'll just uh, save that, and then come back to my terminal. And now what we will do is just con uh, come out of that. We'll clear our screen again. We'll do a Docker build. Um, Take a few seconds to, to run that, clear this again. And then if we look at Docker images, um, that's pretty cool, right? That's that's six meg. So that's a tiny, tiny image. Let's see if it works though. So we'll just uh, run our uh, uh, server. And again, problem is we're getting a failure. You get this no such file or directory. So unfortunately, it doesn't have a lot of the runtime stuff that we need. So unfortunately, I can't run with a file that small. So it's, it's a shame um, because we obviously really wanted that to kind of kind of work. But the good news is, and this is really good news, is actually in that Dart image, the official build. Uh, the Dart team have actually created all the runtime files that you need, and you can just copy them in that multi-stage build onto your image, and then it's going to work. So let me show you how that works. So let's come back into Visual Studio Code. And what we're going to do here is we are going to copy these runtime files in. So we'll just do a minus minus from equals builder again. And then this time we are going to copy uh, the contents of the runtime folder, which is sitting on that folder. And we'll just put that onto root. Uh, and then if I hit save and then come back into my terminal, let's clear this. And now if we do a Docker build, it takes a few seconds. Uh, we'll do Docker images. And you can see that it's slightly bigger than it was before. Previously, it was 5.97 megabytes, but now it's 8.98. I can live with that. It's still a lot smaller than the uh, 69 megabytes that, that we had for the Buster Slim image. And it's certainly uh, much smaller than the 521 megs, but we're now running at 8.98 megabytes. So let's clear my screen and then we will just um, do a Docker run again, and our server's up and running. And then if I do a curl localhost 8080, it's working, hello world. Now the last thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna rerun that test that we did um, uh, to, to see how that Docker image performs. So again, 12 threads, 400 connections uh, for 30 seconds, and then it's gonna come back with the number of requests per seconds running for that Docker image. And really success means we're gonna expect that to be roughly around the same sort of size at 12 and a half thousand sort of requests per second. And there we go. So if we look at that now, you can kind of see it's that particular test ran at 11,000 requests per second, but um, as you see, that is just because I'm gonna get slightly different results from run to run, but r basically, it's running at that sort of 12 and a half thousand type number. So there we go. I am now running a super tiny image. And in that test, it ran 11,000 requests per second off of an image that is basically eight meg in size. So that is phenomenal performance. Um, off of a tiny, tiny image. And, uh, you know, so I think there's a lot of uses that you can have for that going forward in the future. And I think we can have a lot of fun with that. But the, just the ability to, to write in a really nice language, and Dart is a beautiful language to write in, and be able to run kind of performance of around 12,000 requests per second off of a Docker image. But as you saw on my machine earlier, right, natively it was running at 50,000 requests per second. Then I think there's a lot of stuff that we can do. Now, there's a lot of other things that we can do to make that faster and, um, and, and, and squeeze some more performance out of there. And again, in future videos, what we'll maybe do is take this web server that we ran and then try and put it up on something like um, Google Cloud Run, for example. So we'll have a little bit of fun. But, but again, I think that opens up a lot of options, really teeny tiny small uh, web server image, but running it kind of form phenomenal performance in Dart. So as you say, a lot of people think of Dart as a uh, sort of UI language, which it is. Uh, and basically most people are using Dart for essentially building Flutter apps, again, which is uh, the, the right use case. But as you can see, Dart has 
got some really interesting options on the back end as well, right? So, um, you know, it's a nice, fast little framework. Now, of course, you know, it it's maybe doesn't have the same sort of ecosystem as something like a kind of Node.js or a Rust or CC++ but, or Java, etc. But but as you can kind of see, I think, I think it's a neat language and uh, you can do some interesting things there. Anyway, I hope this video was useful and it was a bit of fun for everyone, but we'll have some more fun with that in the future. All right, thanks very much. Speak soon.